Welcome to the overview of OpenPeer. My name is Robin Raymond, and I am the chief architect behind HookFlash's OpenPeer. The holy grail of the internet was supposed to be allowing any device connected to talk to any other device in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, thus allowing the free exchange of any type of information or media. The goal of peer-to-peer -peer and the reality of peer-to-peer -peer is often strikingly different. Corporate-owned servers are used extensively on the internet to store and coordinate the exchange of information online between devices and users. Thus, the flow of information is often centralized in the internet cloud. Further, given the ongoing threat of hackers and spying, corporations and users buy firewalls to protect themselves. While the firewalls do their job to protect against intrusion, these firewalls, however, have a nasty side effect in that they also restrict the good kind of communication and thus block the free flow of information on the internet. So why is it that peer-to-peer -peer communication is such a big deal? Peer-to-peer -peer communication offers key advantages. Corporations pay major expenses to host, administer, relay, replicate, process, and store data in centralized servers spread throughout the internet cloud. Whereas peer-to-peer -peer allows devices to communicate directly without large server infrastructure. Even though end-user devices are often extremely powerful, they frequently do little work relative to their server counterparts. Instead, a huge amount of the computational power is centralized into servers, whose financial burden to create and maintain is carried by corporations. Contrast this with peer-to-peer -peer where the focus of the intelligence is put at the end-user's device. In the centralized cloud approach, should these servers go down, the entire flow of information between users can come to a grinding halt. Thus, corporations go to extreme lengths of expense to provide the so-called five nines of uptime for their services, often including geographic dispersal of data around the globe, should a data center in one geographic location go down. In a peer-to-peer -peer environment, even if central servers go down, the peers can continue to communicate. Peer-to-peer -peer also offers increased privacy. After all, one might ask, who is watching the data that goes in and out of these centralized servers? Sure, the data might be encrypted on the wire, but who's to say the corporations or the many employees who work for them are always acting in good faith and not spying on the data contained within them? Well, you just have to trust them. Even if corporations and their employees are completely trustable, centralizing the data in one place offers hackers a highly attractive target. It seems like every other week there's another company embarrassed by their compromised data getting leaked. Granted, those are the leaks we actually hear about. In a peer-to-peer -peer approach, the data is not centralized to be a convenient target for anyone. So what is open peer? OpenPeer is designed to be a ubiquitous, open, extensible peer-to-peer -peer communication enabling protocol, allowing peers to communicate easily and directly. This is especially useful to power service offerings like audio and video calling, texting, picture or file exchange, but certainly the uses don't stop there. The protocol was designed specifically to be a natural layer upon WebRTC. OpenPeer was designed with these main goals and advantages. Openness. OpenPeer is a protocol that is freely available to anyone to implement. Greater network resilience. Peers can continue to function and interoperate even if individual or collective sets of servers are down. Increased privacy and security. Peers communicate directly in a secure fashion designed to protect against network eavesdropping, forged communication, or spying by third parties. Federation. The protocol makes it easy for users on one service offered by Company A to communicate to users on an independent service offered by Company B. Identity protection. The ability of users to easily provide proof of their identity on existing social platforms while protecting these identities from being spoofed by others. Decreased cost. Without the need to continuously relay signaling or media through centralized servers, the cost to host, administer, relay, and replicate and process and store data on these servers while providing five nines of uptime is decreased substantially. WebRTC enabling protocol. Designed to be the engine that allows WebRTC to function supporting federation of services, security, identity protection, and peer-to-peer -peer signaling. Scalability. Whether starting at 50 users or moving beyond 5 million users, the protocol is designed to allow for easy scalability by removing the complexity of communications out of the servers. What is WebRTC? Why is it groundbreaking? 
And why is OpenPeer layered above it? WebRTC is a proposed standard being adopted by the major browser vendors in the world that allows any browser to communicate directly with any other browser in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, providing the exchange of audio, video, and data. The technology involved in WebRTC is not new, but the access to this technology by everyone everywhere is groundbreaking. Until now, if a user wanted to communicate with someone using audio or video, they would have to download and install some software application, which proved to be a barrier of entry too great for many users and prevented internet audio, video, and peer-to-peer -peer communications technologies from becoming ubiquitous. Now with WebRTC, users can just browse to their favorite websites and instantly communicate directly with other users without installing anything. No flash, no plugins, no Java virtual machine, no software, nothing. Instantly, fast and easy, users will be able to communicate. But WebRTC is like a block engine without a car's frame or wheels to move it. If a website service wants to offer users peer-to-peer -peer communication, the website has to figure out how to do the heavy lifting and actually get two peers communicating. WebRTC might help move media between peers, but provides no mechanism to indicate which peer wants to talk to whom, or signal if the peers are ready, willing, and able to communicate, or the identities of the peers involved, or the ability for peers from one company to indicate they wish to talk to the peers of another, or bridge communications with standalone mobile apps. That's what OpenPeer solves, and more. It's WebRTC plus OpenPeer that will create the next wave of great communications experiences for users on websites and mobile devices without the hassle of installing software. OpenPeer is designed to layer on top of WebRTC, offering its many services and advantages. So why do we need yet another protocol? The question comes down to advantages. When you factor in the design and architecture choices made by OpenPeer, you will discover natural advantages over other cloud-based centralized technologies. After all, OpenPeer was purposefully designed and architected to have those advantages. However, just like picking any technology, you should always pick the technology that suits your needs. If a centralized approach makes sense, then perhaps that's what you should use. But when you look closely and compare the advantages of a peer-to-peer -peer approach for communications for many service offerings, OpenPeer will be the wisest choice, and perhaps the only choice. Thank you for listening to this presentation on OpenPeer.